All right, y'all. So maybe if I just don't focus on messing up, I won't mess up. But I'm starting with all new stuff because I feel like all of that was just going bad and I didn't want to deal with it. And maybe it was the needle that something was wrong with that and it just kept a bubble coming. I don't know. So we're going to start fresh. Um, it's always a good idea to start fresh in everything in life. No shade. Okay. All right. Let's just go ahead and turn this upside down. And then, okay. So. I have realized, y'all, that guys always lie from the beginning, right? Now we are, I, I knew that guys be lying. I'm, 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 I'm not naive to the bullshit. But, why do guys lie about wanting to keep things casual? Like, when you're very honest about not necessarily, like, dating for a serious relationship, guys always be like, oh, me too, oh, me too. And then the first thing that they want to do is they they want to, oh, I know you got niggas, or I, I know be mad niggas on your line, da 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 da, da. And it's like, okay, and? Just like I know you got mad bitches. Like, men really don't want to be casual. They really want to feel like they own you. They want to feel like you're theirs. And I know that that's not new news to nobody. But it's like, y'all be fucking up something that could be real good. Like, the cats are outside carrying. Y'all be fucking up something that could be real good for the both of us. Because you out here falling in love and shit. And I thought I was going to be one of my feelings. But guys be falling in love off of FaceTime. That shit blows me. Like, this dude that I, um, well, not been talking to, but I was, I, I was answering his calls, and he was answering mine, and, li like, we literally was talking for a week. This nigga done bought a flight. Now he's telling me he coming to New York to see me, mind you. There was a whole event that he was coming for. Now he not going to the event. Now he just coming for me, and it's like, well, first of all, I didn't tell you about a flight. Second of all, I appreciate the gesture, but you was also coming here for something else. I just happened to live in New York. Okay, so it was it, it was definitely convenience that was bringing you my way. It wasn't just all because of me. I would like to think that, but I'm also a bitch that lives in reality. I'm not Delulu. So what you trying to sell me is, is I'm not buying it. It's still another air bubble in here. I'm really like irritated with this bubble shit. Like normally, maybe it's just mad bubbles like in this moan bottle because Normally, I don't deal with bubbles. Like, that's not my tea. No shade. I'm not a bubble bitch. Now I got less moans in here. Like, y'all, what are you supposed to do when this happens? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of suffering right now. And the bubbles that are coming in now are huge. Oh, actually, it's kind of working. But that's not, I'm supposed to have, well, I'm always taking more than my dosage, but that's none of y'all business. Okay, why is this not working for me this week? Oh my God, this is so draining! It's like, I don't be hating shot day for like the regular shit. Like people probably think that the girls be hating it because you gotta like do your shot. No, that's the fucking easy part. It's like being a fucking doctor. Like I didn't, I didn't want to be a doctor. I wanted to be a tranny. Okay. Now, what the fuck? But either way, guys just be lying. And they be wanting to be in serious relationships. But what I found out that they don't know how to handle their feelings. So either they start catching feelings real fast and get real upset when you don't be head over heels over them. Because I'm not a head over heels kind of bitch. I'm head over heels for me. And, and, and that's just no shade. I feel like every girl should be. Um, okay. This is more like it. <laughs> Talk to me, me. Big M, not the little one. 
Yeah, we got it, bitches. We're here. Okay. After 50 tears and a lot of wasted time, we are ready for this week's moan shot. Everything is pissing me off. The alcohol bottle is pissing me off. Everything is pissing me off, okay? You know, we do a double wipe over here. We let her dry. But yeah, guys in my life right now are literally hit or miss. And the one that I actually enjoy talking to the most, he's just a hood nigga that be doing what he be doing. His communication don't be doing what I wanted to be doing. But when we do link, it's so fab. It's so fab. And here came over here. But that's the girl this weekend. And I was so excited to see him. I really was. He was trying to act like he wasn't excited to see me. But baby, when he got over here, he had carry in the name. Hold on. Is it all the way in there, girl? Yeah, it's going to end me. Uh, pump, pump, pump it up. This week's moan shots um, inspired by. No, this week's moan shot brought. This week's moan. This week's moan shot brought to you by too damn much. Cause that took too damn much. All right. Do we have any bleeding? No, we don't. See, it don't be the shot part to be irritating me. It be making sure I don't got no bubbles in there. Oh, it was a little. It was a little situation. Oh, she is bleeding. We don't normally bleed. What's the tea? What's the tea? Let me get into her. What's she giving? She giving spotty? She's giving you one a little band-aid? You want to be childish? Heard you. Heard you stink. See, I thought I was going to be talking to y'all a lot this week, but I guess this week was just giving... <laughs> Let me show y'all what it really be giving sometimes. Because sometimes the moan shot do not be perfect every week. I always tell y'all every week is different. Y'all probably don't be believing me. But every week is really different. Hold on, let me get in. I don't think it's exactly over the specific dot. But as long as it's covering it for now. I hate putting the band-aid on. It just makes me feel like, girl, you a child and you shouldn't even be doing this because why don't you know how to do this right so that you don't believe? But <sighs> whatever. This life ain't easy, and I always tell people when they be reaching out, they be like, oh, I want to start my journey. I'll be like, make sure it's really what you want. Hold on, I'm going to fix my fucking panties, because these tucking panties be carrying. Okay, but yeah, I always tell, I always tell girls that be like, oh, I'm ready to start my journey. Can you give me advice? I'll be like, make sure it's really what you want to do. Make sure it's really what you want, because it takes a lot. It takes a lot of mental um, strength, because for you to do a hormone shot, after you didn't have to redo the vial 50,000 times because you didn't go to uh, fucking nursing school and all of this and all that, like, girl. And that's also why they give you extra needles. Don't be sharing y'all extra um, needles with people unless she really a close, close, close girlfriend and she really need a needle. And make sure it's a fresh needle, not, not one that you didn't use and clean. We don't do that, honey. If you are going to lend a needle to someone, it needs to be a clean one, everything fresh out the pack. Um, but that's why I try not to really lend my needles to people because they do give you a lot and it'll make you be like, oh girl, I'll um, give you a needle like if you ran out. But in situations like what just happened, I just had to use two, like a whole two sets of, of syringe and two, ne and two needles. So 
in total, I just used four four needles. It was two different sizes, so two and two, and then two syringes because the first one I just wasn't fucking with. It wasn't doing it right. And if you're sharing with a lot of girls, which I know sometimes the girls really do need help, and I get that. I've had girls give me moans. I've had girls give me, you know, fresh, um, I want to stop saying needles and syringes, but fresh needles and syringes if I didn't have any. So it's okay to look out for your girls, but make sure you're always looking out for yourself first and that you have enough of what you need for you. Because um, the last thing you want to do is be giving away shit and then you have an off week like this and then you don't have nothing. So um, that's, that's the tip of advice too. But also... When it, like, back to the men, because my brain is kind of everywhere right now. I just feel like a lot of men are are very attracted to trans women. And the hardest thing in dating is, like, deciphering if... In which, men are going to act like this across the board. It doesn't matter if they're dating women, trans women, um, non-binary people, gay people. It doesn't matter. It does not matter their sexuality or what they are attracted to. Men just be wanting to have sex. And I understand that. But when you're dating and you're dating intentionally, at least for me right now, I'm not dating solely for that. I'm also not dating for a relationship, but I'm dating like, I want to have a bond. I want to have a friendship. I want us to have chemistry. I want us to actually like, like each other romantically and to be able to, you know, have a romantic vibe, but not necessarily be exclusive or moving towards like a serious relationship because I know the things that I want to work on before I enter another relationship are like I want to go to therapy I want to be at a certain point in my career which I know you can't really you can't like stop yourself from being in a relationship or finding your soulmate or being happy based on your career but I know that right now I'm in heavy hustle focus mode like I am about to turn shit up a thousand percent and I really just want to give myself all of my energy like I really do because in college I was pretty much in relationships the whole time through college all the way up until my senior year and that really taught me like girl you got to make sure that you are focusing on yourself that you are not out here exerting a bunch because in college it really took a lot out of me to be in a relationship and still intern and still work and then be a part of college organizations on campus and like really be involved and be involved in my schoolwork while also dealing with all of the crazy emotions that come with relationships because they're not easy anybody who told you relationships is easy lied to you it shouldn't be this difficult challenge every day but you got to put your energy into it and i am not in a place where i want to give somebody my energy that i need for myself like i'm about to enter my 30s this year I need all my energy for myself because the way I want my 30s to be is going to be fab. It's going to be my 20s, but with more money, with more financial stability, with more self-discipline, and with, you know, the elevations in my career that I want by then. So I, I just, I'm not looking for that. And it seems like as I'm talking to guys, it's either on one end, they, they all say that they down for like the, the friends with benefits. Okay, sure. I'm just going to keep it, I'm going to keep it a buck with all y'all. They all going to say that. They're all going to say, oh yes, I'm fine with something casual. That's the same thing that I'm looking for. And everybody starts to get into the situation and it's either they end up just want to hit it and quit it or hit it every once in a while and quit it or hit it when they want and you hit it when, when, when you want or... It's the exact opposite. They fall in love after a week of FaceTimes. And you'd be like, are you serious? Like, this nigga just texts me like, I guess you're not interested anymore. Y'all, we was on FaceTime on Saturday. I don't know how the phone hung up. I told him I was doing my makeup and I was on live. He like, oh, you don't want to be on the phone? I'm like, if I didn't want to be on the phone, I, would, I wouldn't answer the phone. So then he's like, oh, I'm like, I'm just telling you that I'm on live because I think that that's a polite thing to do. And I want somebody to tell me if they were on live or if somebody else is in the room and they have me on speakerphone. Like, what are you not understanding about this? So I don't know what happened when the phone disconnected. I'm doing my makeup and I'm talking to people on live. But it's not the first time that he's been on the phone with me while I've been on live. So I'm like, in my head, I'm like, why is this a big deal now? Like, what? So he just keep making it a thing and not having my attention. And I'm like, this is getting annoying because I already told you I was doing something and I could have not answered my phone at all and paid it, but I didn't. So what are you complaining about? And then I guess the phone broke up or he had to call somebody or he just got tired, but then he ended up calling me back, but I didn't see it. Cause once I looked down and seen that the phone was no longer on the phone, I put the phone on my bed. Then I didn't see the phone ring 
I ended up going out with my sister after we was talking, Ken, having a good ass day. We ended up going out and he calls me and texts me the next day, but it, he didn't call me, text me until like 6 p.m. I was asleep. I, I wake up for work at 1.30 in the morning and you know this. So then I wake up to a text that says, are you still interested? It hasn't even, no, it's just been 24 hours, maybe 30 hours we haven't spoken. If that's going to be, if like, if that's going to be the man of 2024, stay the fuck from away from me. I don't have time for that shit. We don't even live in the same state. Why the fuck do we need to talk every single day? I don't need to talk. I don't talk to my mother every single day. Me, me and my mother go two days without, uh, without talking to each other. Me and my sister that live upstairs go five days without talking to each other sometimes. If we both busy at work, like, what makes y'all so entitled to somebody else's time? But one thing I had to notice, every time we was on the, on FaceTime, he was either in the bed or in the car. One or the other. Or I see him at a restaurant one time. Mind you, you sound like you be having shit to do. You always telling me you got shit to do. But... I'm never seeing you do the shit and you calling me all the time. I don't got a problem with you calling me, but what I got a problem is is that you expecting me to be as not busy as you. And that's just never going to be my tea. So that's the end of my TED Talk. That's the end of my rant. Um, I'm just going to wait until I start meeting some over 30 niggas. Let me be clear. Men over 30. And, I'm, and, and, and then I will actually clock back the fuck in because I don't have time for this childish shit and I feel like I'm I'm in a I'm I'm, I'm in a zone where I'm attracting men that I've always attracted and I guess something in me attracts these type of guys that are a bit young minded not all the way together and they have goals but it's like it's just like a lot of this right now and I don't know if it's me I'm not a fix-it kind of bitch. Like, I don't be out here trying to fix niggas. I don't be out here opening my bag, shaking my purse, none of that. That's that's not me. The most I'ma do is get your Uber home because I want you out. But, um, yeah, all of that other shit, it's not giving that. So, I need to find guys that, you know, are on their grind the same way that I'm on my grind. And I'm not saying you got to have money and da 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 I mean, you're not, you're not just going to be out here expecting me to do shit. Okay, I got bills and student loans, but just somebody that, you know, has it together. And I don't think that that's too much to ask for. And when I say have it together, I mean, yeah, you, you got your shit together. So I don't know, maybe I need to do the work on myself, pull back a little bit, and then I'll start to attract the type of guys that I actually feel like are worth my presence. And yeah, that'll change things, hopefully. Mm-hmm. This is also why I want therapy. Not solely for dating, but I just feel like it's a lot of stuff I need to align in my life to be where I want to be to, to then attract the type of person that I feel like I deserve and that's deserving of me. But also that takes self-discipline because it's no shade. These niggas, they be fine. They be fine. And they be knowing what to do when it's time to do what to, to do. It's no tea, no shade. So um, I think it's really just, you know, I, I'm 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 never letting my one nigga go. No, no, he's mine forever. But I would like to date men that I feel like are more deserving of me, and and give me what I deserve. <sighs> Who knows what any of this means? But thank you for watching my video. Like, comment, subscribe, and next week we'll be back with another Moonshot Monday because this is an every week thing. Mwah. No bars.